Well grown people. So I've been getting a lot of questions about applying for a study permit to study in Canada as a Jamaican. Like the steps, the process and you know, how to go about it in the right way. Uh, unfortunately, I can't reply to everyone on a one-on-one -on -one basis, so I decided to just do a video that uh, I hopefully can give you some form of information that you need. Uh, before I start though, let me just say that I am in no way, shape or form affiliated with any form of immigration consultant firm or lawyer or none of the sort. But the information that I'm about to give you is just based on my own experience. And I hope that you can use my own experience and make your experience a little bit better. Right? So, the first thing you have to do when you decide to study overseas, um, in this case Canada, is decide which part you want to really study in our country. Canada is very big, right? So you have to look up a university uh, that offers something that you're interested in and then apply to it. When you, are, when you are looking up a university or when you are choosing a university, try to choose a university that uh, is somewhere that you have some form of connection, ideally. Not to say that it is a requirement, but ideally, if it is that you have a family member, distant family member, could it be a friend? Try to choose a university that is close to that person so you know transition easier. That said, when you're up, when you're deciding what to study, uh, right? You have to try and choose uh, to study things that you have a background in already. So, if it is that you want to do business, you have to have some form of business experience. When I say business experiences, you have to do some form of business subject in a school already from in a Jamaica. You can't take a 360 in a no case at all. You can't never do engineering and say, boy, I want to do engineering. You can't never do medicine and say, I want to do medicine. You have to do something where you have some form of background in, right? Uh, because primarily, uh, a lot of persons get turned on because they don't believe that they're a legitimate student. They believe that hey, they're just trying to use school as a means to come to Canada and not actually go to school. So a way of, alleviate, of eliminating that factor is actually trying to do something that you have some form of experience in. With that said, the first step of the process is to apply for the college. Once you apply to the college, the application process usually takes like two weeks to know whether or not you get accepted in the college. Try to choose a college that is a designated learning institution, which they call a DLI, which is very easy. Once you look up a college or university that you're interested in, uh, you can just Google whether or not they're a DLI, and then that gives you all the information. Uh, after getting accepted, that is when the process really starts. This, this is when you start putting together your documents now in order to apply for a study permit, which would allow you to study in Canada. So the study permit usually takes uh, the processing time really varies, but it can take anywhere between four weeks to eight weeks, Jamaican time, right? And that's if you do it uh, paper-based. And I recommend that you do it paper-based. Don't ask me why, my telephone, my own experience. <laughs> uh, that, that's it. Uh, so the documents that you really need is your acceptance letter from the college or the university that you're going to study at in Canada. You're going to need uh, proof of funds. You have to show them, say, hey, listen, you have enough money to cover your tuition for at least one year. And as a matter of fact, before you go to the Canadian High Commission to apply for the study permit, you need to actually pay that school fee for a year and get your receipt from the college, right? In addition to that, you have to show them, say, listen, you have enough money that can support yourself for at least, I'd say, at least a year in Canada, depending on a program, right? So even if you're studying for four or five years, you just need to show that you have enough money that you can cover your, your general living expenses for a year. Just in case things come and kind of get tough, you're not going to drop out of school to go work, right? Um, a big reason why most persons get turned on based on my own experience is uh, they are not able to prove that they are a legitimate student. Not only that, they are not able to prove that they are a legitimate student, but they are unable to show that they have enough ties to their own country. And ties is very important, people. You have to show the, the officer who is reviewing your, 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 your case that, listen, after you finish studying, you have a general interest to come back home. Whether or not that's bullshit, that's really not yours to say, but you have to prove that, listen, there's enough things keeping you home 
right? And ties is very various. Ties doesn't have to be outside land. It can be a boyfriend, it can be a girlfriend, it don't even have to be a husband and wife. It can be a child, it can be a mother, it can be some sibling, it can be anything at all. But there has to be something that you can write in a letter to say, listen, I am interested in studying in your country. However, it is my intention to come back home because of these reasons. Which brings me to my third thing, which is a statement of purpose. Your statement of purpose is a letter that you write. And that is the single most important document which is going to be a part of your visa application. And the statement of purpose is your only opportunity to actually communicate with the visa officer. And that statement of purpose is where you write everything. Why it is that you want to study in Canada? Uh, what is your intention uh, after you finish studying in Canada? What is it that you want to study in Canada? Why you want to study this in Canada? And all of those factors. So pretty much you're selling yourself in that letter. 60% of a visa uh, success rate depends on that letter, right? So pretty much you can just simply do the application form and write the letter, just saying how important that letter is. It is not usually listed as a, as a requirement, so a lot of persons don't know about it, but it is an expectation that you write that letter, right? Uh, I'll do another video another time that pretty much can probably break down the statement of purpose, then you can have an idea what to put into it. As I said, you have to pay a school fee for at least a year before you go to the, to the, to the embassy. Right? Show them that you have enough money to, to cover your living expense for a year. Show them that you have enough ties in Jamaica and write a statement of purpose. And nine out of ten times, that is all you need, along with some other requirements, which is your passport size picture and passport and yada, yada, yada. But those are like standard requirements. But the, the requirements that are really important is a statement of purpose, the school that you're going, your ties to Jamaica, and what it is that you're studying. You get what I'm saying? Boom. As I said, I don't want to make this too long, so I'm just probably going to just break it up, and I'll do an, uh, another video shortly that breaks down the statement of purpose and probably like go through the, the steps in detail so you guys can have a more general idea. Cool?